You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. I hope you enjoyed your week. I hope uh, I thank you for sharing uh, your time with with us here on the podcast. Ryan's here with me. Hello, Ryan. How you doing today? I'm okay. How are you? Doing pretty good. We had an early podcast this morning. We did, and uh, now we're gearing up to do these uh, ads and things like that, mm -hmm. so we can keep the show going. I appreciate everybody listening. It means a ton to me. Uh, also, uh, we're going to be getting right into Billy Magnuson here in a second from No Time to Die, the new Bond movie, Made for Love on HBO, Many Saints of Newer. The guy's rocking it. He was a great interview. I had a ball talking with him. What, yeah. a, what a pleasurable, just a, a good human being. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, I think you guys will really enjoy this podcast. Um, a shout out to all my patrons. If you want to help the podcast out a little more. There's a lot of perks and fun stuff, and uh, that's patreon.com slash inside of you, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash inside of you. Um, also, I'd love for you to, if you're here for Billy, to uh, subscribe to the podcast. You can watch it on YouTube. You can listen on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. And what are our handles, Ryan? At Inside of You Pod on Twitter, at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. That's it. Uh, it's very simple. And keep this podcast going. I ask for your uh, your help. Your <laughs> Your uh, what's the word? Support. Support would be the right word. It's a good word. Um, really fun interview. Uh, anything going on here in the next weeks? If I'll be at the LA Comic Con on December fourth and fifth. Tom Willie and I are doing a Smallville night, so if you're in LA, you might want to see that. It's a really a great little two man show that we do, and we're going to be signing autographs that weekend at the LA Comic Con. So get your tickets. Get your tickets, and uh, um, also uh, November twentieth. November 20th, we're going to be doing a stage at my band Sunspin. You go to sunspin.com, get tickets. You can watch it virtually. We do two shows, 2 p.m., 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Saturday, November 20th. And it is on the 20th, isn't it? Isn't that right? I hope so. I, 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 I would hope so. I, I, that's all I have to say. Fucking hell. Jeez, Ryan, are you okay over there? It is. It's the 20th. <laughs> uh, fuck it. Let's just get right into it. Let's get into uh, this guy. He's... Uh, I, I'll let you uh, let you listen and let you decide. I'm babbling, so I'm gonna get right into it. Let's get inside of Billy Magnuson. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Dude, the first thing I want to say is Ryan here, my engineer. The first thing he said was, "He's got you have a podcast." <laughs> Who you? Oh, I had it's a uh, my buddy put it together, uh, Kyle Chevron and Lamorne Morris. Lamorne yeah. was on the podcast. Lamorne's a great guy. Lamorne's a great guy. I He's hilarious. Him. He's hilarious. He he. They wrote a, like a scripted podcast, so it's like a bunch of episodes. And you're on it. Yeah. Are what? you one of the hosts? No, it's not like that. It's scripted, so. It's a story about like a it's a throwback '80s action like comedy, that's uh, just scripted out. Great Two stoners, just. Like, but how did you get Rick Astley to do the music for it? I don't know. I don't know. You that don't wasn't know Rick? my job. That wasn't my job. But you know who Rick Astley is? Of course I know. I, I Rick roll people all the time. Never gonna give you up. Never, never gonna, gonna let you down. Never, never gonna, gonna run around and desert you. All right, now you're a singer. Uh, you do I, Broadway. I did Broadway, but not um, not singing wise. Like that, what those people do eight days a week singing is unbelievable. I've done theater, just like live, a lot uh, of theater, straight plays and stuff like that. But I mean, come on, you, you you got nominated for a Tony. Luckily, yeah, it's crazy. It's such a weird weird thing. Again, you just kind of go through your career and do what you do, and kind of shit just happens. And stay humble. You, at least I don't know how to do anything else. Have you that. have you gone into any asshole phase? Because you're you're in your thirties. I mean, have you gone into like, hey, I'm fucking cool as shit. I'm like, because I, I went and I'm sure those stages were like, hey, all right, and then you realize, hey, shut the hell up. There's you know, you're <laughs> yeah, an idiot. I, no, I if, if probably my whole life has been the asshole stage, you know, <laughs> like all my jobs are like cast as like the asshole. Are like, you mostly cast as the asshole? Um, I feel like I play the villain a lot more than the the hero. 
So it's always. Been I never would have thought that. I would have thought you were a leading guy, guy next no, door, never, the good guy. Never I could see you playing a Jeffrey romance. Dahmer because oh, he's a, Jesus. Can you see the Jeffrey Dahmer though? <laughs> Thanks, I really appreciate. Well, you kind of like have his res- a, a semblance to him, a resemblance. I don't know what he looks like. He's so. a good-looking dude. I'll Google him. I'll I mean, he's a serial killer. Him. Yeah, but yeah. I think that's you not know good. That. That's not. No, that's not, not good. Pop- that's not. Can I say something about you? So, I don't know. <laughs> Look, we never met each other before. Or I, know, I know. And like, when was Smallville? Like, Smallville was like 2001 to 2011 or something. Um, I don't know what it is, man, but you stuck in my head for years. I never watched the show. I maybe like came across that episode once and you were in it. And I don't know. There's just actors in this world that like stuck with me and you were one of them. And I don't know exactly why. You know where you just like... I mean, that's a good thing. Yeah. I, you really... I think they're... <clears throat> um, you have a quality that I think some of my characters have is this like... It's a, the bad guy, but he's so charming at it. You know? I appreciate and that. And that there's something... That's the key. It's, the key is to... Charm. I always say is play it grounded and yeah. you, you don't... No one's shows off their evil. Yeah. They cover it. Yeah. Well, no one's a, the villain in their own story. That's one of my famous lines in the in the small. No, like, I, am, I am the villain of the story. It was one of my favorite things to say yeah. when I get kind of. Well, like, thank you. Well, you kind of did that. I saw because I saw Made for Love. Oh yeah, uh, HBO series. Yeah. No, and I want like he's and you're the character like really framed as a he's a bad guy, but like you for some reason by the end of it you're still kind of likable, and I, it was kind of frustrating to watch. <laughs> I was like, that's good. Well, that's the point, yeah. right? Again, no one's the villain in their own story. So maybe yeah. that's why you're getting cast so much in roles because you have this likability, and they're like, "Oh, we could see him play that guy, but like he'll, you'll like him. You won't instantly hate him." I, I guess I don't know. Do you ever go into a project being like, "Is this the character they're gonna love or hate?" I, I you just kind of like play the scene and play the story more than anything. I feel. So you don't have an agenda. Like when you go into it, you just say, "Hey, these are the lines. I'm gonna hit my mark. I'm gonna play it a certain way." I mean. How does that work for you? For yeah, I would say more than anything, like as an, I don't know if you feel this way, as an actor, I've said this quote so many times, but you're a color in someone else's palette. You could be the best blue, but you can only be blue. Right. But uh, again, you could work with them as much as you can, but you're not the the painter. Yeah. You're just the color. I mean, you. I mean, you're doing all this great stuff. The Many Saints of Newark that just came out. Yeah. No Time to Die, working with Daniel yeah. Craig. I mean, I read that. I'm just like, you got so many things going, but I want to take it back. I want to see like, <laughs> did you always want to be an actor from a, from a young age? No, no, I just uh, no, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was young. I, I was. What like, did you do when you were young? Like everybody else, were I you played just... out in the in the woods. You know, I went like rode bicycles. I I don't know. Really, it wasn't. Um, yeah, it wasn't. I wish I had something. That was crazy. I had definitely like ADD or something that was just all yeah, over the don't place. Don't we all? Don't, don't we, we all? Um, but yeah, it wasn't, I was never afraid to be on stage, I guess. Like if like our school was doing something, they would always ask me to MC just because I would be the only kid that would be like, okay, I'll do it. How do you MC a show? Like, uh, I don't you know. Mean? It was like a, whenever you were a kid, like I'm you're Billy Magnuson <laughs> and you're watching Welcome into the woods. PS, <laughs> PS 97. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Doing a bunch of, I don't know. You just had charisma at a young age. I guess. I don't know. Were you now listen? Were your parents very supportive? Like you know, I had to, I, I come from dysfunction, so you know, I could talk all day about my family. But if those that listen know that I, I I have that. Did you have any kind of dysfunction, or were you just did you have a normal upbringing? Uh, I don't know what's normal. I had mine. Um, <laughs> well, what, what do you remember? Uh, I come from a big like uh, Catholic family in New York. You know, there was my dad had like seven sisters and two brothers. And then the amount of cousins I had growing up in New York. And they were all my grandma, Ruth, was like the That matriarch. was my grandma. Really, Ruth? I have Ruth um, tattooed on my arm. Oh, beautiful. Ruthie. Is she Ruth. still with you? No, she's she's sadly passed. Yeah, mine too. Many years ago. She was a blessing. She yeah. was amazing. I got the other one, though, the Lithuanian one. What's her name? Otilia. My Otilia. 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 She's Lithuanian. Yeah. She has that accent. She talks like this. Yes, yeah, so we call her Motula. Motula. What does Motula mean? <laughs> it means loved one because Buna is grandma in Lithuanian, but we say Motula. Motula. Because she was like, I'm not going to be called grandma. Don't you dare do that. Right, right. She <laughs> yeah. doesn't, you know, don't age me. Yeah. yeah. I never meet someone with a grandma Ruthie. In fact, Ruthie. I do this thing on Instagram where I, I, I do this. Uh, 
Snapchat like grandma looking woman, and I'm like, "Hi everyone, it's it's Aunt Ruthie," and I do this whole. Did thing. she have the New York accent and all that? My stuff. grandma, oh yeah, she did. She always had a big cigarette in her mouth, oh, a big yeah. ash that was about to fall, and I go, "Hey, you're gonna burn the house down. Get out of here! I'm not burn the house down." <laughs> but you, so you had a big family. Yeah, so I grew up just, and there was a lot to sift or fight through, I guess you yeah. can say. But I think it was very supportive. But once she passed away, the family like spread out a, a lot isn't more. that something that's what happened with my grandmother when she died everybody there, there was no more meeting place yeah the, uh, the, yeah. the you know the, the matriarch was gone and now yeah. everybody kind of like uh spread out and live their own lives they it's kind of sad though those days where you're all together and you're eating and you're bitching and people are arguing in the kitchen over oh the, it was the crazy it was always there was never a dull moment you know there was always something going on and i do miss it and like i think i crave that as an older man like i would like to have that do again. you think you want to have kids in a family Hell yeah you do Hell yeah 100 percent I yeah want to, i want to do the whole thing but yeah. you have to be in a relationship and i have to do to. that yeah and right now you're single yep that's yep. that's what i am hey perpetually hey single i mean la is a tough city why is it so tough is it, it you know people in the midwest always say you know my friends where I grew, I grew up in indiana i was born in new york but they always are like you know why, why aren't you married and why aren't you and it's just it's different in the midwest it's the mentality of like people wanting family in there it's just i guess i don't know if there's that much more to do maybe la there's just so much scenery and there's like oh there's this I, no, I don't i think this city just naturally gravitates people who are on an individual journey mm, more than anything yeah. and that's the priority over uh, a partner selfishness is what you're saying there's a yeah <laughs> Yeah, I would say so. Well, I guess like if you want to have a career, you have to do everything you can to have that career. And yeah. if, if something impedes that. Which is crazy because I, I think <laughs> all this shit is chaos and there's opportunity and it's either you swing when you got the opportunity or you don't, right. you know? Yeah. And I, I'm not afraid to like fail, you know? And I think, Are you really not afraid to fail? I think like this tattoo I got, it's... You failed? I always... No, I always... Well, <laughs> it reminds me It reminds me that my friends are assholes. Um, but right. What it, is it? What does it say? It's just a string. Okay. It's I, a string. Oh, I thought it was actually a string. Yeah, no, it's a string tattoo. And like, do you have other friends that have that? No, because they were like, well, we were like graduate college and, you know, they're like, let's get tattoos. We were drinking off the wagon down on McDougal Street right. in New York. And I was like, okay, I'll go first. And I got my tattoo and my fucking buddies didn't do it. And I'm are like, you are you serious? fucking kidding me, dudes? Were you drunk? Of course. You're 22 in New uh, York, just going crazy. Yeah. And they didn't get it. They so it shows think. you how much they care about you, Billy. Exactly. And I still love them. Yeah, you yeah. still love them, even though they didn't. But it, it represents facing a fear. I, I, for some reason, anytime I've been very like, I don't know, if a, a big fear is in front of me, I have to go right into it. That means I have to do it. Really? No like matter how weird, scared you are. No, no if, even if it's like karaoke or something. Okay. I well. hate it. And because I'm so scared of it, I'm like, God damn it, I have to do it. Right, right. Yeah. But it's like, that's kind of been my driving force. Anything that like puts me off weirdly, I'm like, that's where I'm going. Have you failed? Yeah, plenty of times. You have. What have you failed at? I failed at so many things. Um, specifically, I think trusting yourself a lot. That's um, where failure comes from when you don't trust yourself, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's where you like avoid something that's deep inside you and you keep pushing it down or hiding from it. Um, and that's a big, I, I think that's the biggest failure. What, yeah. is, what, is the, what is that, the one thing that, what's the one thing that scares you? The one thing you're afraid of failing at? Not trying. God, I... I mean, you're such a, that's such a good attitude, not <laughs> trying. I think I don't try sometimes because I'm like, I do not want to set myself up for a failure. There's that quote, like the, the biggest regret is not trying or something like that. Yeah. I would rather regret, or I would hate to regret not trying. Like to not see where it goes, not go on the adventure, not go around the river bend. Right. You know, I've got to go well, into Pocahontas. You, but, you, <laughs> but you had to learn that. Like, I mean, you had to have like... Were, you, were your parents loving? Were they like, Billy, I love you. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were like that. They were affectionate. And like, I remember going to church like as a kid and, you know, we would hug my dad all the time and my mom and people would come up to him and be like, wow, your your sons are so affectionate towards you. And right. like, it just kind of was the household 
We were in. See, know. not me, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not what, me. what is the trauma? I never kissed. I'm not saying my... we don't all have traumas. We definitely no, all no, have traumas. I but know. It's like but, but I never, you know, I never kissed my father. My father never looked <laughs> at me and said, I. "I love you. I'm proud of you. You're doing great. Uh, uh, whatever you do, I'll support you." I never heard any of those things. So really, I, it's, it's surprising that I'm even here talking to you right now. Well, that's <laughs> that shows the the strength that you have within you already. You don't need it. But sometimes you have to look at that strength and go, look what you accomplished. Look what you, that's what I need to do more is kind of look at, look at that. Look at what you've done. Look what brought you here. Look how you got here. Yeah. You know, but, but you did it. But do you take the time to reflect? You do you ever it. celebrate yourself? I think you do with the. With what? With the, the, 50, the 50 top bachelor. Oh God. That's Everyone, the one. It, every, you said, don't bring it up. Go ahead. Say it. Billy. No, go no, ahead. Not, say it. Say no. it. Tell them what you see. I, I see a lot of cool things, actually. Well, there's Muppets. only one thing of me up there, too. There's a picture of me and Steve Martin, but there's a picture of me with the 50th most eligible bastard. That's the only picture of me I have in the house. The rest are just movie stuff. and But it's the podcast room, and it's at a distance. And the one thing you see that makes everybody listening think that I am ego <laughs> no, and I, I am don't narcissistic. Find that at all. I don't think you are at all. No, I mean, no. we all are. We all can be. <laughs> we all can be, but I, you have to. You only got one point of view. Yeah, I yeah. guess that's true. Yeah. So what was it that got you really into acting? What was it besides you started emceeing like in high school for, for things? Or? No, I wasn't. I was a what big was jock. It? I was actually, I was, re I was a big wrestler. I did football. I wrestled too. Really? What weight class? Uh, so I was such a low weight class that I was 16 and one and 12 of them were forfeits because no one weighed that little. <laughs> No one was that light. So I was like, I'm 16 and one. I was like, nobody could wrestle you. You weigh eight pounds. Yeah. I mean, I was a really small kid. I was the smallest kid in my high school. I graduated. Really? Because I think you're taller than me, man. I'm six foot now, but I grew after high school. I grew like eight inches or nine yeah. inches. Were you always in shape and always tall and always? No, I, I think I'm built like a brick shit house. Like, but you're, you're solid. Solid. Yeah, yeah. So I was like 160 at like as a freshman. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So you played, you wrestled? Were you a good wrestler? I was pretty good. My brother's the real one. He was a heavyweight state champion in Georgia. But um, wow. Yeah. Dude. Now, wait a minute. We forgot something. What's up, bro? Your dad was a, a kickboxer? Yeah, a, a professional kickboxer. Yeah, he did. So did he toughen you up? Um, he taught me a lot of martial arts. I think, more, again, like in the 80s and 90s, martial arts was like a huge, huge oh, yeah. thing. Well, right after the Karate Kid. Yeah, yeah, and then so he kind of brought me into that fold growing up. I remember like having to walk to get my like yellow belt, uh, I think like six miles in the snow in New York because he's like, this is going to make you a man. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. A frozen man. I don't think he ever said those words, but I think it was like for him, he was like, this is a journey my son must take, you know? <laughs> yeah. And me just a kid being like, I don't want to. Jeez. Yeah. Did you get picked on at school at all? Or you were always a bigger kid, so you didn't get really bullied? No, I just, I, I'm not looking to fight anyone. I also like, tra like we moved out of New, I left New York at eight years old and moved down to Miami, wow. lived in Miami, went to Georgia after that. So I was like, I was always the new kid in school, right. weirdly. And you got to like redefine yourself. A little bit. I think, I don't know. Do you have friends from kindergarten still? No, I have a friend from like, when you say friend, do you mean someone you still hang out with? I guess. I know a lot of people my age that know people that they've went through a whole grade system with their whole life and they're still friends. And you're like, I never had that. I never had a solidifying group growing up. It was always malleable and changing and like right. long-term relationships are uh tough for me I maybe guess. that affected you maybe somehow I right think it now does. it's like you're, yeah. you're always perpetually you're just you're moving you're changing you're you know because as an actor you gotta you gotta go different places you gotta film you gotta yeah. leave for three months and that's hard to have a relationship with someone who is not really comfortable with themselves or yeah. they, trust is a big thing yeah. you know all they hear in tabloids is oh this actor cheated or this actor did this or this yeah. you know actress well, i'm not that's I don't, I don't do that well i'm just saying malleable <laughs> yeah. like you know it's like you know yeah I, yeah, I don't do that either. Yeah. I mean, when I was younger, I mean, if I went off and did a movie, I usually didn't have a relationship. But see, I never I, I never have relationships. What am I talking about? <laughs> I mean, I, I do, but they just never work out. I'll, I'll be. I think you'll find it someday. You do? I do. I hope so. Yeah. Because I'd, I mean, I'd like to. I think it's about choice a lot of times. It's a choice you make every day. I think. Tell me more. Uh tell you more well you seem to have some knowledge of this i have no knowledge because it just doesn't seem to work out for me well so. <laughs> 
Inside of You is brought to you by my good friends at Sonos. I don't know how many times I have to tell you this, but Sonos makes the best product out there. That's my personal opinion. I've had Sonos devices in my house for nearly 18 years. I wouldn't know what to do without it. I could play a different song in each room of the house. I could play the party mode in the living room when friends are over. I could be in my, uh, my, my, my bedroom playing sexy music to myself. There's all sorts of things you could do. It's compact. It's beautiful. You don't need speakers, you know, unless you really want them. But, uh, and they have this new product called Roam. Sonos Roam is the ultra portable smart speaker that allows you to bring the Sonos experience wherever you go. It weighs less than a pound and it's a premium durable design makes it perfect for the home and for on the go. Ryan, tell us more. When you are home, Roam connects to your Wi-Fi network and the rest of your Sonos system and then automatically pairs with your phone on Bluetooth when you're on the go for a seamless experience. Using automatic true play tuning, Roam smartly adapts to your surroundings and whatever you're listening to and creates sound that's astonishingly detailed and perfectly balanced. Control Roam using the app, Apple AirPlay 2, or your voice with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. With Sonos, you can start with one speaker and expand your system over time like I have. All Sonos speakers connect over Wi-Fi so you can group speakers in different rooms and play music throughout your home. You can also listen to different radio stations. I listen to Stern. I listen to uh, my own playlists. I listen to an 80s channel. It's really amazing, Sonos. And uh, Rome is just a new bonus that they just came up with. The technology is just amazing, and uh, I love my folks at Sonos. So thank you, Sonos. This uh, podcast is sponsored by the wonderful people, the wonderful product at Sonos. Inside of You is brought to you by Geico, your good friends at Geico. Guys, we want life to be easier. I told you this. When I go to a grocery store, I don't go to a grocery store. I have someone get my food. It's uh, it's easier for someone to bring you food because that's kind of who I am. I like to minimize my uh energy uh and i don't like to do too much and geico makes life a lot easier they have this bundling policy that's just amazing you could pay your homeowners renters insurance along with your auto policy one fell swoop it's easy it's geico easy whether you rent your home you own your home Geico makes it easy. It's as simple as that. Um, everybody knows the name Geico. So um, we already have so much to do around the house, so much to do around life in general. And um, all you do is this. You go to Geico.com. G-E-I-C-O. You've heard him. You've heard the name, Ryan, haven't you? Oh, I've heard the name. Yeah. Of you just you freaking go to Geico.com. You get a quote. You see how much you can save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico. Com. Inside of you is brought to you by Monk Pack. Healthy snacks have a bad reputation, folks. And let's be honest, most don't taste very good. They don't fill you up and they certainly don't satisfy your cravings. This episode is sponsored by Monk Pack, who makes snacks that taste like our favorite sugary treats, but with one gram of sugar or less. Monk Pack Keto Nut and Seed Bars contain one gram of sugar or less, two to three grams of net carbs, and they're only 150 calories. Wow. And they're great for anyone following a keto lifestyle and the perfect snack for anyone who is trying to eat better or cut back on sugar and carbs without sacrificing taste. You know, it's it's important because we're always on the go. We live a fast lifestyle, uh, you know, and it's easy to just stop by a fast food restaurant and get a burger and greasy fries and just, you know, eat and feel like crap and then get depressed and go, what am I doing? But with new Monk Pack, you could feel good about yourself knowing that you're putting something better in your body than a lot of the stuff that's out there. So um, it's easy for me to just grab a snack and I'm on the go. They're perfect for a quick snack to satisfy your sweet tooth without guilt. Enjoy Monk Pack keto nut and seed bars as a quick breakfast while running errands or after a workout. Yeah, I'm obsessed with these bars. Just obsessed and uh, probably eat more than I should. <laughs> uh, I got to be f fully stocked with these with these bars so I could be on the go. And I don't I try not to keep any junk food around the house. I just keep my monk pack. Try it for yourself, folks, and you'll see. And we have a special deal for our listeners. Get 20 percent off your first purchase of any monk pack product by visiting monk. That's M-U-N-K monkpack.com and entering our code IOU at checkout. And Monk Pack is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So you know what that means? It means if you don't like it for any reason, they'll exchange the product or refund your money, whichever you prefer. So to get started, 
Just go to monkpack.com. That's M U N K P A C K, monkpack.com. Select any product, enter the code IOU at checkout, and save 20% off your purchase. Monkpack, delicious, nutritious food you can count on. We thank them for sponsoring the podcast. What were we talking about? I don't know. Life. We're Just talking about life. 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 I mean, <laughs> so your dad was a kickboxer yeah and what was your mom doing she was like an aerobics instructor so you had this athletic <laughs> family doing jazzercise in the yeah. house while well, your dad's kickboxing so but he, he was more of a carpenter and like i remember i think he like won a fight and he really like beat someone up and there's actually here's a um a plaque that's f on my birthday five years before i was born of him like standing over a guy and that was his like what? last fight because he just, he was like, I can't do this. It was different from sparring. Sparring, you're not hurting someone. Right. And like, he hurt someone. And he was like, I can't do it anymore. Did he teach you that? Like sort of about like, you know, you don't want to hurt someone. You don't want to start fights. You don't want to, was he a good role model in that regard? Yeah, yeah. I think he, he, he definitely stand up for your beliefs and stand up for who you are, but there's no need to escalate things into a physical. Bah, bah, bah. Right. Don't get me wrong. I've been in fights, but. You can like, take care of yourself though. I, you have to, <laughs> but, you, but you can you can stand your own. Yeah, of course you have to. Have you lost a fight? Yeah, you have. Yeah, I've won too. So. You've won. Feels good yeah. to win. It's you know I'd rather not be in a fight. The people choose fights with you because you you're a handsome guy. They like hey pretty boy, and they want to like. Dude, last <laughs> night I went to a concert last night. What concert? Hall and Oates? No, it was at the Fonda. This band tennis. I don't know. It was a buddy's friend. I'm a, a friend of a buddy's band. Right. Um. And I remember just like being like, shit, let's go dance. Let's go dance in the, the the pit or whatever. And starting to dance. And people in fucking LA were not dancing and elbowing a girl legitimately pushed her, like dropped her drink on me there. And I was oh, like, what boy. the fuck is going on? Like, are we not at a concert? Can we not dance? Like, What's people, that about? It's like a mosh pit. I don't know what it is about. I don't know. So what'd you do? Laugh. Laugh you just all. laughed. You didn't say, hey, what the fuck? You no, know? I was like, I'm going to keep dancing. What? You can't ruin my time. Yeah. Like, if you're having such a shitty time, you can't bother me. People try to ruin my time all the time. I'll be yeah. at a concert. And what do you do when you go to a concert, Ryan? You dance. You listen to music. You dance. You, you stand up. You enjoy yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm at a concert, a lot of concerts. And maybe because I listen to like light 70s and 80s music. Mm -hmm. But I'm there to watch Hall and & Oates or Lionel Richie. <laughs> and I'm going to dance on the ceiling. I'm up there. And they're like, dude, you got these assholes in the back going, sit, sit down. down. I'm yeah. like, and then finally, I turn around and I get mad. I go, I'm at a fucking concert, dude, enjoying myself. Why don't you go home with your fucking binoculars? Yeah. What well, are you doing here? Uh, the Watch a DVD. Or the people that bust out the f f camera phones and they start recording the concert. You're like, what? Why'd you come? Why, didn't, why, why wouldn't you just Enjoy watch it the on concert, YouTube? Right. Yeah. right. I think that that is a big thing with society right now that we are so separated from the moment and like where we are. It's all about being present. It's so hard too. I try so hard. I'm listening to Eckhart Tolle. You know, and I'm like the power of now in the yeah. car, and yeah. you know, it's like I got a good one for you, please. Uh, Michael, Michael, a singer. It's yeah. um, write that down. Something right. surrender, living from a place of surrender. And what did you learn from that book? Um, that everything's a gift. Every moment's a gift because to to have this moment, fucking supernovas. 13 billion years of reality had to happen for this moment to happen and you have nothing you can't affect it at all you can just observe it and experience it so just living your life every day and being grateful and thankful yeah i'm not saying it's easy because you're a constant easy. battle with this guy up here yeah but and your feelings and and the outside do you world. say gratitudes in the morning do you pray do you anything learn from your catholic days going to church no and, nothing like that i think I, I i'm fortunate to just kind of have that when i wake up in the morning i love i love it i love feeling that sun i love making my cup of coffee and it's like my favorite part of the day what do you do to 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 be present what do you what things do you do um are you saying like yeah, like some people will go to the beach. Some people will go take a hike. Some people will do nothing like me. I identify things. I say, what the, what are the color of your eyes? What's the color of your shirt? I just try to really just be here and like. I'm colorblind. What, are you? Really? I am. What color are your eyes? Blue. blue. They are blue. Yeah, okay. yeah. But like even that, just like name things and just be like, where am I here? 
instead of being stuck up in my head. Like what's around you me. You do this. that unconsciously, subconsciously. No, I, sometimes you have to force yourself. It's a battle all the time, don't you think? Yeah, like I'm here. I like your hat. Yeah. I, I like uh, you. your, your headphones look good on your head. Thanks, uh, buddy. This is a nice jacket you have. Ryan, yeah. you have good facial hair. You have a yeah. good uh, good head of hair. Yeah, take your shirt you know? off, bud. Yeah, take your shirt <laughs> off, Ryan. Yeah, let's, let's, really, be, let's really be present. I mean, if we're going to be present, <laughs> give us a present. Um, so all right, talk to me about like the, when you got into acting and how that started. You want, let's keep going into the acting. See, this well, is like but, because also you, the you thing did. that drives me crazy about LA. It's like it's the only about, thing is But about you know what? Well, let's talk about this, though. You yeah. did soap operas. I loved it. As the world, but see that that frightens me. That's one of my biggest fears because of the amount Why? of dialogue you have to learn for a soap opera. Oh yeah, forty pages overnight. Do you have a photographic memory? No, it was a muscle. But the guy that played my dad in that show, it would he would literally have three pages of dialogue, and they would. I don't know if you ever did a soap opera. No, look at me. Yeah. Do I look like I could be in a soap opera? Yeah, why not? Because I wasn't beautiful looking. You, dude, you're so talented. Again, you stuck with me. You, or at least from my opinion, I think you're talented. And thank, thank you, know, thank you. I appreciate you that. Just enjoy well, I it. just never. I mean, I remember auditioning for soap operas when I was in New York for like days, yeah. days. Oh, you're a New York guy. Yeah, I was born in New York, and then I moved to uh, Indiana, and then I went to college in Kentucky, and then I moved back to New York. But I remember auditioning for like Days of Our Lives, and yeah, because um, I, I like Days of Our Lives, Stefano, and yeah. those characters. But uh, I never got a call back, never nothing for a soap opera, which is probably you know I'm glad because all that dialogue. But 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 talk to me about that. Um, I was the guy who played my dad. He was so good. They would go three, two, one in action, and he would literally have the pages, and they go three two one he'd put it in his shirt and he would have the whole thing memorized how is that possible if well, i had that gift i'd be fearless but too. it's a muscle i have to admit like when i was doing it at that time like the first few months was like it was it was tough were like, you stressed uh at first and then once you go fuck it yeah you, you let it go all of a sudden it was just like a muscle memory you knew what was going on you're there not saying i hit the line every time but you were got right. finally an understanding especially like being in a TV show, at the the length you were didn't become like just kind of second nature. It did become more of a muscle, but I always worried about it. I always wanted to know my lines. I the biggest fear I'm doing the, I'm doing a movie coming up, and like you know, uh, you know, if I don't have the lines on me, if I don't have the script, if I don't have they they wait, if they're changing things, that's a big fear of mine. I'm like I want to know it so well that I can move around, I can pick up this this glass right here and I could just talk to you while I'm doing my lines because I know them so well. And I always read a lot when I was younger about, you know, I wouldn't say I read a lot, but like, <laughs> you know, watching, you know, Anthony Hopkins talk about acting or Michael Caine and saying, learn your lines. Yeah. That was a terrible Caine. But, you know, um, the more you know your shit and not just going, oh, I got them. Because there's sometimes I see people in the makeup trailer and they're learning their lines. And I'm like, how can you be great if you're just learning your lines now? How can you be great? I don't want to be well, good. Well, I think you're or exactly great. right. How can you be great when you do it that way? Right. I, dude, I think that's the trick. I remember doing a play. It was a two-hander in New York. And I spent, before the first table read, I had a... a I hired someone to just come and read half the play with me every day. And I just read it. I never I never memorized the line. I just read the half the play every day. And by that first table read, I didn't even have to look at the script. Are you serious? Yeah. How smart is that? Uh, that was probably the best thing I ever figured out to do. Like, right. I didn't think it like, I was just like, I don't want to be unprepared. And then once you get to that point, you do get to throw it all away. It's just, it's there. That's true. I always remember that the more you do a play, the more you rehearse, the more you read it, yeah. you kind of get the lines. Yeah. Once you know the story and you're yeah. like, you know. But you never have to think about it. Right. Yeah. That's a, that's like getting into any character, I think. It is it is the three months or two months before that you're just doing everything for muscle memory. You're just letting like when i did Polly, like just sitting in that fucking i would take a shower Polly on uh the, the many saints of, yeah. of newark which is now on hbo max. hbo max which yeah. you can watch which you guys got to check out yeah. but learning those mannerisms it was just i had to live with them over and over again so once i got to set with all those shit and all the blah 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 i didn't have to think about those body or my mannerisms or the lines or the the way he spoke his right. cadence and all that stuff. But you but you did like you knew this guy you met this guy who played. No, I only met him finally. Uh, or Tony, uh, he was just on set one day and stuff like that. But it was all before I was just like so watching did you... YouTube videos. Oh, you watch like YouTube videos, and I like I was like I got to figure out who Tony is, not not 
Polly Walnuts, you know? Right. <laughs> because obviously I think the line, Walnuts. the line between Tony and Polly are, is very thin. Was he yeah. like, uh, you're doing it all wrong. What the fuck? I do that? What are you doing? No, not at all. How you doing? Hey, thanks for doing this. <laughs> no, You're playing me. This, How cool is it? He had this like, kind of like thing to the side. He always took the side of his mouth with this lisp. So that's what you did? Yeah. <laughs> Do that again. That was cool how you did that. <laughs> you just... I, no, I'm, I'm like, doing like, like a Bill Murray from Caddyshack. Yeah, I haven't done it. Like, it was hey, two shoot. years ago I did this thing. So it's like... Really? And it just came out now? Well, muscle memory, man. Right? Wow. I think. I don't know. So what do you do? You just kind of... I don't know. He had this thing and I just saw it with the way his mouth sat. <laughs> the best line I ever heard was like, I love that cocksucker like a brother. And then he fucked me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Paul, one of that's, your lines? No, that's just him from the show. And I was just like... David Chase writing that line is brilliant because like it's just the most absurd absurd line. When you auditioned for this, I read somewhere that you didn't even like you never had seen Sopranos. No, I never. No, I had never seen it. And I auditioned for a different character in the film, and I didn't get it. I failed. I didn't get it. Did they just offer you the other role? And they were like, "Hey, would you be interested in trying this route?" And I was like, "Okay." And then I did, did you my, audition for that? No, I didn't. You didn't. Not that time. No. But because I auditioned for another character. So you came to set like knowing what you're going to do. And sometimes that's hard when you get an offer mm -hmm. and you get on set and you're just starting to do this mouth thing, like, you know, doing this. Well, and... it's okay. There's like a roadmap when you have to, it, the character kind of already existed. So you're just kind of following. But they were excited to see what you were bringing to no, it. No, they were not. They hated me. <laughs> what? <laughs> they hated get me. out. Get out. Oh, it was challenging. It was a what challenging. What do you mean? Uh, it was a challenging one. That's all I can say. You could just say it was a challenging role. No. It was the other stuff was challenging. It was just challenging being on set. Yeah. It was just like there was a lot of cooks. Uh I that, I'm, I'm going to leave this. You can uh, leave that alone. I can leave it alone. But overall, did you love the other actors you were working oh, with? Oh, that's the thing. Like the crew, the guy, the crew and the the other actors were fantastic. We're all theater guys. So we had like this we we had a uh, what was it not nomenclature? Was that what it, where you could speak the same language and we could uh, talk yeah. about and the trust in the space was wonderful because everyone is doing some weird shit, right? You know, and yeah. You but just how get, do you trust yourself when you're the people around you are not kind of like you're like you're just doing your lines, you're reading them, you're acting them out, you're trusting yourself. Is it hard to trust yourself when there's some chaos going on, whatever that was? Of course, of course. So but you just, you just stick let go. With it? No, you just let go, man. What are you gonna do? You're you're there. You're gonna do what you're you gonna have do. Such a good attitude. Yeah, Billy Magnuson. <laughs> He's got such a good attitude here. Thanks, man. Um, what was the hardest <laughs> part about that? About doing that part? About being in being in the uh, many uh, saints of Newark? I think it was letting go. It was like just keep going down this avenue. Just keep going. Like this is what you rehearsed. This is what you practiced. This is what you prepared. So trust it. You've done this process and so many other projects. Why don't you just continue down it? It's challenging. Inside of you is brought to you by Chili Sleep. You know, science tells us, Ryan, that the best way to achieve and maintain consistent deep sleep is by lowering core body temperature. Hmm. Temperature-controlled sleep restores testosterone levels, fellas, repairs muscle after a hard day's work, and improves cognitive function so you always start your day feeling sharp and alert. Chili Sleep makes customizable, climate-controlled sleep solutions that help you improve your entire well-being. Chili Sleep makes the Uller that's O-O-L-E-R, and Cube Sleep Systems hydro-powered temperature-controlled mattress toppers that fit over your existing mattress to provide your ideal sleep temperature. These luxury mattress pads keep your bed at the perfect temperature for deep sleep, whether you sleep hot or cold. These sleep systems are designed to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and give you the confidence and energy to power through your day. Imagine waking up and not feeling tired. It's just a glorious feeling. Chili Sleep can help make that happen. For an extra layer of comfort, they also make the Chili Blanket, the only weighted blanket that can also be paired with a control unit for the ultimate sweat-free sleep. And, you know, with all my back problems and neck problems, and, you know, it's hard to fall asleep. And uh, I, there's nothing I like better than having a nice, cool bed and getting under my covers. It just is so refreshing and relaxing. And uh Head over to chilisleep.com slash I-O-U. That's C-H-I-L-I-S-L-E-E-P, chilisleep.com slash I-O-U. To learn more and check out a special offer available exclusively for Inside of You listeners and for only a limited time, 
That's chili, C-H-I-L-I, sleep.com slash I-O-U to take advantage of our exclusive discount and wake up refreshed every day. Inside of You is brought to you by BetterHelp. What would we do without better help, Ryan? Are you still doing the better help? Still doing the better help. And is it helping? It is helping. I love it. I love it. I think, you know, we're in such a climate. And I think the climate's always been there. There's always been stressful times for people. There's always, it's not like life gets any easier. It's just like, how do we make life easier? And that's better help. Better help. The folks at better help can really help you. Whether you're struggling with grief, relationships, or stress, or you're having trouble sleeping or meeting goals, online therapy might be for you. It's for me. It's for Ryan. It's for millions and millions of people around the world. It helps you live a better life. BetterHelp is secure online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with licensed professional therapists. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own accredited therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. Uh, The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. How easy is that? You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. I'll tell you, you know, therapists in Los Angeles can cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars and better help is just a, a great option visit betterhelp.com slash inside and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional in fact so many people have been using better help that they're recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states um I just love BetterHelp. I they've been a sponsor for a long time and they're helping a lot of people and I want to thank better help Inside of You is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at BetterHelp.com slash inside. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. Try BetterHelp. Many of my friends have texted me and said, does this really work? And they seem to have figured out that it does. So check out BetterHelp and get that discount. BetterHelp.com slash inside. Do you watch yourself? Yeah. Oh, does a, a carpenter look at a table after he built it? Yeah, but there's some, some actors who don't like to watch themselves. I think that's weird, man. It is, I think it's weird, too, and I think it's bullshit. Yeah. I think every actor says, no, I don't watch myself. They watch themselves. I, mean, I guarantee. Yeah, of course they do. Because, again, you can't see what you're doing. You, you can't learn or you can't grow yeah. unless they really don't. And you're like, that's why they do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, you have to be invested in yourself. Not in like a, a selfish way, but like this is your pro- the in the acting career, like we are the product. That's what sucks. Like you are the product, so you have to constantly mold it and shape it and work on it, and right. which is exhausting. I the problem I had actually one of my biggest failures was um, connecting my self worth to my career, and I hate that feeling. Like, Explain that. Explain that. Um, your self worth to your career. Like, are what, you are you worthy? Yeah. Are you good enough to be this part, to be a successful actor, to be someone that people want to hire? No, you I, you know this this game is a uh, it, it's a game of no's. How many no's have you gotten? And a million. It takes, and it takes I'm waiting on yes. a no today. <laughs> yeah, I'm know. honestly waiting on a fucking no today. <laughs> I hope it's uh, Try, it's a, it's at least maybe <laughs> trying to sell a show I pitched and wrote, and I think oh, it's wonderful. Luck, and I felt like the you know the president was in the meeting, and he felt I felt like he loved it. But like, you know, I'm so used to rejection now that it's just like, how am I going to prepare? And usually I'm like, okay, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. But sometimes you go, this, this was, is it me or or no? (laughs) Well, maybe, but no, it's like, this is too good. What's the problem? Yeah. What is sometimes you get probably sometimes has nothing to do with actually the project. That's what's crazy. And that's what I'm saying. Like taught, like disassociate yourself from the, the product, like the, the career. How do you do that? I have no clue, man. You're I still try. you're still wondering about that. You still have self doubt. You still like yeah, of course audition for you, you do of course I, again. But all you can do is let it go. I, I, you say that so freely, yeah. like I just let it go. Do you really just let it go? No, there's nights I've stayed up. There's weeks I've gone through this. <laughs> I have <laughs> been on benders. <laughs> I've been on I benders. Have. I've been self sabotaging myself over and over again. But right. like, yeah. At, at, but what what value does that actually bring to my life? Brings what, nothing. Brings nothing. 
Yeah. So it's just kind of constantly going back. Isn't it's that, a practice, you know. Isn't that something like you, you'll uh, run lines and you're nervous and you're like, I want to be great. And you get on there and, you know, the first take's not great. And you're like in your head a little bit. You know, you have to. And sometimes you say to yourself, fuck everybody here. <laughs> because at the end of the day, when this say they say cut, yeah. I'm on screen. Yeah. So what do I give a fuck about anybody? Just have it. And those are the days where I was the best, where I just said, this is for me. I'm fucking full of confidence. And it wasn't all the time. Yeah. But when I felt that, I go, why can't you feel like that all the time? Yeah. And Can what is it about that? Why can't we just, once we, it, it's almost like my mind is like, you're great. So the next time you should be great. Yeah. But why don't you, why do you feel like shit right now? Why don't you feel confident? So, so I want to rephrase what you kind of said. You said, yeah. fuck everyone here. I think that that everyone here is actually yourself. And you go, fuck myself. Fuck myself. Oh, fuck myself. It's not mm. everyone. It has nothing to do with anyone else. It's actually the fight you're having in your your own and, head. Yes. So Internal how do you shut struggle. that guy up and go? What do you do? What do you do to shut him up? I, it's hard. I don't know. I don't you look know at someone's there's... eyes and say, oh, your eyes are brown. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sky's blue. I don't, I, again, it's, uh, I actually, doing the soap operas with one of the, one of the best gifts I've ever gotten in my career because uh, it was like right off the bat. And Ellen, uh, she played my mother on the show. Ellen DeGeneres? No, Ellen Dolan, I think her okay. name is. And um, lovely woman. And I remember one of the days, like I was probably like th maybe three months into it, like uh, uh, doing soaps. And it was one of those days where I was like not hitting my marks. And I was like, God damn it. It's just like really struggling. And I was like, oh, my attitude was shitty. And she came up to me. She's like, say your fucking lines no one gives a fuck about you worrying or being bad okay say your lines we all want to go home no one gives a shit and like to realize that like i was putting all this pressure on me and like doing all this other shit it was like that's not the point of it you know you are a part in this wheel and wow uh, yeah it was just that kind of that could have crushed an actor no it actually helped it was it helped so much because it was just so honest and i think um that I've that shit always resonates with me. I think that's kind of what I hate about Hollywood a little yeah. bit is the deception of it all. Like you could just tell me no or don't do that or yeah. anything. Don't like pussyfoot around it. Just like put it on the table. Well, like it doesn't help anyone to, you know, not hurt their feelings. Right. You know, because it's not about you're actually doing someone a service by being authentic and honest. Right. At least I feel. When you watch yourself, I mean, did you watch your performance? in the many saints and go huh that's pretty good yeah i did you did <laughs> i was like <laughs> you know like, you're like all right this oh, works <laughs> it worked it worked because i had no i had no clue at, at least actually when i did the adr uh i just remember like oh okay okay i'm not i can like go to bed and like feel what were you worried about that you were coming across as over the top or everything Everything. everything you just worry about that shit yeah of course and no one called you and said hey we saw the dailies you're great um no no one said no that. one said that you just hope that this is a big deal this is the prequel for uh -huh. sopranos this is but you never again back to that you never watched the show at the time because someone said or maybe you said no. you couldn't afford hbo at the in time college no of course <laughs> i couldn't afford hbo no right no um yeah no never never watched it until the finally i got the job so i just like binged it it's a great series like the premise i still haven't seen it oh the, the whole premise a mobster going to therapy and like it's fantastic a great setup for that like right i think it, it's brilliant who's your favorite character in the show i mean tony soprano he was your favorite yeah i mean james Gandolfini was is an unbelievable actor i remember seeing him in god of carnage on broadway and he was fantastic he, he just had a presence and a, a, a light around him that was just Le was it called levity is that what it is weight weight levity i don't know is that like a magnetism just like magnetism he has magnetism yeah right yeah um do you ever get starstruck because like when you're working with daniel craig on uh, no time to die i mean and you've got this you know you've got fight scenes and stuff like are you are you like oh fuck daniel craig yeah yeah sure but again it's not about the individual it's more like my expectations of it um so you don't get like you get a little starstruck at first i got like weird starstruck i remember meeting bill Irwin the first time right 
And like I was, I just love clowns, and he was like the famous, most famous clown in the world. Right. And when I remember meeting him on Broadway. I was just like, "Fuck, Bill Irwin!" No one knew who. What he clown was. was he? No, he just had this clowning bit. He he, was, he really? would just do these bits, and they're like all on YouTube. And and you met him, and you were starstruck. Yeah, and he's a nice guy, and I've, yeah, a wonderful guy. But you think you would have said, "No, I got starstruck when I met Demi Moore. I got starstruck when I met." Uh, yeah, no, Dem Demi was great. Like you, I, again, I won. Okay, when I the first time I met a Meryl Streep, I was doing Meryl Streep. You did you worked with Meryl Streep and Into the Woods? Yeah, she was into the. Yeah. Holy shit! I gotta watch this. She's the one who got so. Was, uh, tell me, tell me, please. Yeah, I was doing a play. So I was doing a play. Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike. The was, one you got nominated yeah, for, right? Sigourney Weaver was like my girlfriend oh, in come it. Come on, you know, man. David Hyde Pierce. We're doing the show at Lincoln Center, and after the show, David and I shared a dressing room. Knock on the, you know, knock on the door. Uh, I open it, and all I can think is like, "You're her. You're the, you're the chick. You're, you're." Her. I couldn't think of her you name. Couldn't think of Meryl Streep's I name. Couldn't. Well, when she, when you open a door and it's Meryl Streep, you're like, "What the fuck?" You know? Uh, uh, yeah. And then, uh, uh, what'd she say? I, hey, is David there? <laughs> like, oh, I wasn't. You're great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the story cuts to like. I get into the woods, I audition for it, whatever. Um, and she basically, during like a table read, leans over and goes, I got you this job, you know, because of the play. Are you serious? Yeah. Meryl Streep fought for you? I don't know if she fought for me, but I think she gave me the opportunity to audition. She was like, get this guy in here. So I, Wow. Yeah. I Did you out. get a picture? Well, you, you worked with her, so you yeah. have photos of you and Meryl. Yeah, Are you she... cool now? Could you text Meryl and say what's up? No. No, nothing no. like that? Anybody you became friends with, the Sigourney, do you, you throw Yeah, Sigourney's great. You could text her. Yeah. You could yeah. say, Sigourney, what's up? Yeah, all the time. What do you I call her? It. Sigourney. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you have a nickname like Gorney. Gorney. Or no. Sig. No, no. Or uh, Oh, she Ripley. does go by Sig, yeah. She goes by Sig? I think so. Oh, hey, Gorney. Ripley, what's going on? <laughs> no, no, no. That's amazing. Yeah. What was this? Uh, you had this unbelievable fight scene. I haven't, I haven't seen this with Daniel Craig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. No time to die. So crazy. Talk to me about that. Uh, and how do you prepare for that? How do you? Months of uh, like there was this French, uh, um, what do you call it? Chor uh, fight choreographer. Yeah, like the the combat. What do you call? It? What stunt crew? Stunt crew. Yeah, and they brought me in. You know, a few months before I started, and I would go to London and train, and we just worked on the dance of the fight over. How and long over. was the was the fight? The fight itself, like on screen, Ugh, I couldn't. Forty-five seconds, and it probably minute. took you how many months to really get it down? <laughs> Not, but I, I have dance training, and I think it's all dancing. Weirdly, you know, the choreography. Right. Um, I had it fast, but you know, you're just you're waiting to shoot the thing, so you just go and practice, and and train. all your kick, your your fighting, and your karate that you took to it all ha helped out in this. Yeah, of course. And like how to throw a punch properly. And That's how what was I Daniel hate. Craig? Was he? Tell me about how he gentleman. was. Gentleman. He's a gentleman. He's a great guy. He's funny. Um, I, I feel so fortunate to sit across the table with, from him and like just get to know him and like toss jokes around in between takes. And he's a real gentleman. And he he is a great number one. You know. Have you worked with any bad number ones? Yeah. You have. You won't talk about that though. No, I, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. All I can but say I, is. Yeah. All I can say is like. When someone makes a project about themselves rather than the project, that's when I know it's bad. It's the the biggest issue because we all, everyone that's standing in the room agreed to do this project, not fuck with someone's ego. So what do you do? What do you do when someone's got an ego? Someone's like, you know, you're like, ah, this is about them. How do we, do you just, what do you do? What's your approach? Uh, let them do what they got to do. And just avoid worry about them. yourself. Worry yeah. about everybody else. Just you want me to call part. you like Sir Bum Bunderbatch? I don't get. I don't care. Yeah, sure, whatever. So just, Benedict <laughs> Cumberbatch was no. an asshole. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. You didn't work with him, did you? <laughs> no, never. No, no. <laughs> I'm a big fan though. Yeah, who isn't? He's like fantastic. See, when I I, I get a little starstruck, like you know. Did I, you ever see his like thing when he was the dragon and like the CGI shit? No. Him crawling around on the floor, like oh, it's great. Yeah. Oh, it's what is it? Fucking unbelievable. He was uh the the dragon. In, in the hobbit the yeah, new the hobbit movie one, smaug yeah. smaug yeah so he had to put on the suit with the dots on it and he crawling around the floor mitts dude homeboy so hard 
I'm like, I see the dragon. Uh, and like here, really? He, he was yeah. a dragon. Yes. yes. He looked like a dragon. And his, even his cadence was yeah. just like so. Well, he didn't look anything like a dragon. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing the suit. Yeah. The, but you like buy the, it by his mannerisms and his oh, physicality. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I see a tail, yeah. basically. He's yeah. like using the tail. And you're like, that's insane. His, his imagination is so great. And like him fucking... Um, circus andy circus andy like circus. i dream of doing roles like that those guys are unbelievable yeah, put a mask on me put me in the, i would love have to. you done anything like that yet the, no the most is the prosthetics or like big characters like in aladdin i had a big aladdin character. i hear you were great in that 30 seconds of screen time but i hear you were it was a fun character it was i I'm, my friend troy said you know anything about this billy magnuson guy yeah. he's like yeah aladdin oh yeah 30 seconds That's all 30 seconds and what'd you if do if i got that much and it was screen capture? No, no. It was, it was just, just animated it was just voice. A char- no, it was a real character. I just put a character. I'm just saying more just like big characters. I love that. Like the bigger you can make a character and like the world you can play in, that's what I want. I want to like transform and just do Andy Circus shit. Who do you want to work with besides Andy Circus? Who's Who are some of the actors that you, you. go? You. Yeah, oh, I'd work with you. There we go, bud. I got some projects, man. Let's go. Let's I'm not kidding. You better answer your phone, though, or Maggie over there, your publicist, better answer your phone. Sounds good, man. No, I got some good stuff, man. I, yeah, you're great. I mean, you, you've done so much stuff, and you're now how old are you? 36. 36. Do you yeah. feel 36? Yeah. You? Do, I feel 49. <laughs> I'm 49, and I feel every bit of it. Ryan, how old are you? 33. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. It's just <laughs> unbelievable how much better you feel at 33 than 49. Yeah. And even 36. Yeah. Dude. I feel, I, you know. It's crazy. You just your mentality changes. That's for sure. I think there's still so much to learn and stuff. I imagine. What were you at 36? Where was your headspace? Um, let me see. I was 36. You know, I think I was, I was just caught up in all of it and i was just doing it and you don't stop and it's just non-stop and then all of a sudden you know I, it wasn't until i was like 44 45 i started going what's it all about man why did i have to <laughs> fucking care about what's it all about why couldn't i continue to just not give a shit yeah because i think there in my mind there's got to be something more there's got to be something more than just doing something getting attention getting credit for it being you know people like your it, there's got to be more there's got to be purpose dude and so tell me keep going down this rabbit hole well you know just like you know uh going to the, working at the ronald mcdonald house and helping kids and like doing movie nights with them and then becoming friends with one of the kids who has cancer and becoming close friends with his family and just driving up there to hem it two hours and spending the day with him and worth more than your worth, whole career. worth more than anything worth yeah. more than anything and, and like i love this kid he's like my brother so much to the point where he has terminal cancer that i find myself praying saying remember the exorcist did you ever yeah. see the exorcist yeah. remember at the end when he says come into me take me yeah. the priest says yeah. i say that i'm like let this kid live man let this yeah. kid have a wonderful life just take me i've had a good life man yeah. i'm good and it's not like i'm talking in a macabre sort of way it's just like it just it is unfair Mm -hmm. and uh by by hanging out with him and seeing what a great just a great human being he is and how he looks at life and how things get him excited that for instance he uh he likes to sing but he's never really done anything professional and, and you know he's not like a singer but he's somebody said hey you'd like this blake shelton song lonely tonight and so they brought him into the studio and he just sang it and you know it was already recorded the song was recorded mm-hmm. and uh so he did it and he just loved it and i listened to it and i go oh my god this is so good it sounds so great and his dad texts me and says hey i don't know if you know blake shelton and i go i don't <laughs> and he goes but you know if you can get if there's any way we can get this video this song to blake shelton and i wrote a letter to blake shelton really and my publicist got it to blake shelton and within two days blake shelton sent a video oh and i showed it at his house for him and seeing his eyes light up and blake's like that's the hardest song i've I've ever sang and you crushed it if you were in the voice i would have hit you right in and you know and just talking to him and and his eyes were just like what what's going and just that i could even do anything to make that happen meant the world, world to me i believe it, that. that makes me feel so much better than all the other stuff it's, it seems like it's superficial but yeah. there's um, another good book you should check out <laughs> yeah it's called the second mountain and uh 
I think this is what it's about. It's like there's this um you you have that journey that you climbed in your 30 20s and 30s and everything and you're like it's my career my career and then all of a sudden you find like this kid is an example of this other fulfilling thing in your life that's actually worth value than this other thing that you were climbing to the top and you you made it man you you have a successful career you did it and then you probably were like why am i empty 100 percent. i yeah. kind of fought that my whole life i think there's that, whole, I'm, that I'm, feeling I'm, of like why do i feel empty there's just a, yeah. and people will sit there and go you have a house you have friends you have you know you're not broke you're you have a career you have all these things and i acknowledge it and i'm like going yeah 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 but why don't i feel it i hear you and so what do you do what do you what is it that you do do you do i'm in the valley right now between the two i feel i feel i'm in the valley like i am so I have so many great opportunities in my life and great things that come. And then I find myself sitting there and being like, I'm empty. I feel empty a little bit. Um, because I, I think personally, I think it's family and like, it's like community and all this stuff. And like our career is very isolating and you're put to the side. And again, I'm grateful for all of it. Yeah. But there is that hunger for like purpose, actual purpose. purpose. I mean, it's everybody. Yeah. I think everybody just wants that. It's like, you know, you hear about those people who just constantly work. And I always think, what are they covering up? Yeah. They always have to work. They always have to be on. They always have to get the next They're job. They're always running. Next right. Running. Well, what happens if they stop running? Because yeah. eventually we all stop running. Yeah. And you face it. You face yourself. And you face it no matter how old you are. Yeah. And so I'm gr kind of grateful that I'm facing it now in a lot of ways. And so it's just like, what do you do about it? Yeah. You know? And how many times would you honestly say you've redefined yourself to yourself? I don't know. Or have you always I, been the same person? I think I'm redefining myself now. I think really? now is in the last five years, you know, going to get help, you know, yeah. just like mentally. I wasn't ever, knock on wood, addicted to drugs or alcohol. But like getting my mindset and clear and finding out who I really am. Because, I, you know, for me, I grew up uh, – like I wasn't, I didn't have the relationship you had with your family. I mean, I love my family and, and God bless them. But uh, I just feel like I was doing everything for attention, like just to get attention, just some, some people like me, acknowledge me, accepted me. Yeah. And that kind of carried on where all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, you've been doing this since you're like 17, since you did that first play in high school. And so it's not enough. And they have this thing, I've, I've talked about it, but it's like love and attention have the same feeling like if you're get people admire you and you they love what you're doing that's the same feeling as love but the only thing is is one isn't sustainable yeah one sort of is like you know you, well it's always the tank's always going to empty out and like if you right. can actually love yourself right it's exactly. always going to be filled yeah you know? and, and that's, that, it's a hard thing to do that's a hard yeah. thing to do but i yeah. think if you do more things for other people if you help people if you yeah. i think that's the true that then you can identify yourself hopefully as someone who isn't can, love can a, love and be yeah, loved uh, love is a giving act it's a giving away it you is. don't take it right you can't take love right you can only give it yeah i feel you know i feel like my my grandmother really fucking loves me yeah you know she that's probably a, does that's a good feeling she's with us man she well she's my grandma who's still alive blanche oh, oh. she just said you know since the beginning you know the, her and my grandfather used to just write me these letters that were so proud of you and like and i think oh. they knew that i struggled you know and yeah. but they always write me these letters and even my grandparents are like you know we're so proud of you and all the work you've done but just know that regardless of all this how much you know we you know how much we've always loved you yeah and i and i believe that yeah. Sometimes it's hard for me to believe. Really? Believe that I can be. I, I, the doubt, because it's that self doubt. And yeah. Because, again, probably a drama from growing up being like, I'm not getting the attention or the right. support I need or my feelings being recognized yeah. and like my awareness. <clears throat> Dude, we've all been through it. You don't believe it. You don't believe Someone it. Someone says, I love you. And you're like, uh, oh, thank what's you. What's the catch? Thank what's you very the catch much? here? Yeah. Thank you. I love yeah. you too. Yeah. But you're like, no, dude, I fucking really love you. Yeah. And that's you know it. what I mean? And that, and, but it, it could end there. That's what's crazy, and we can't accept it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why we push it away. And I think, I think you know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say wise enough, but I'm I old think you're good. You got years. Experience is a lot. But I know that I am. I, yeah. I know that I am loved. I know that there are people in my life that love me, mm -hmm. and that that feels good. And I know that I, I, love, I, you. I, I, I love you. Thank you. I, I could turn to that. I could turn to that. I love them. you, too. I love you too. That's right. And I believe Billy. I believe I believe that you're a lovable person that you really Maggie, want to love. Maggie, I love, love. you too. Love you. 
Well, you know, this has been this has been a really great conversation. The funny thing is, I don't know you, and I talked effort, effortlessly to you. I just feel like it's just very easy. You're someone that there's no intention. There's no it's expectation. Just, it's, it's, well, there's no expect, expectation. It's just more about finding something from you or mm. finding something from me that you get that you go, hey, uh, we're all striving going through this. It. We're yeah. all going through the same thing. We all end up at the same place. It doesn't matter yeah. who you are. It's yeah. like, how do you get there? And you learn from people. Yeah. And that's what this podcast is about. I think it's just learning. You know, Maybe someone takes something you said mm. and goes, you know, what he, what he said really made sense to me mm -hmm. and that, and that's it and most everything i say that doesn't make sense no it makes a very beautiful <laughs> sense i think it does it really does what are you what do you got going on now because you got so so much going on many saints of newark is on hbo yeah. max now when does no time to die come out it's already out it's out it, out. it came in la out last friday last friday yeah or yeah last friday yeah, yeah. yeah. Check so you it got out. two blockbuster things going on right now crazy crazy opportunity what's next what are you working on now uh, I have this film coming out called The Survivor uh, with Ben Foster and wow. Barry Levinson directed. It's going to be on HBO. Um, How tough was that? That was, again, two months preparation. German. So I had to learn a German accent through, well, it's an English-speaking German accent. Sprechen Sie etwas Deutsch? Können Sie leisen und schreiben? Ich kenne. Bisschen. <laughs> Nein. Ich mag dich. <laughs> Je parle français. Et toi? Yeah. Un peu. No. no. Yeah. Ich möchte... No, I can't say that. It's, uh, it's <laughs> perverted. But like... I, ich liebe dich. I ich liebe say dich. I like you. Yeah. But I remember... What's the one? I remember where I lived in Munich. Oder nein, mein Frau. That's, I don't know. <laughs> my grandmother's listening. She's like, no! <laughs> old Dear Jewish God. woman. But I remember learning for this audition and I never forgot it. I didn't get the part, but I remember learning German for the audition. But it was like, but I remember saying things like, I lived in on um, Prince Regentenstrasse und Trogestrasse next to the Friedensangle in München. Yeah. München. Um, yeah. uh, Licken und mein Arsch. <laughs> you know, küssen und mein Arsch. Um, I also know how to say, will you blow me? That's möchtest du mein Schwanz blossen. <laughs> baby, baby. Baby, baby. Baby, baby. And then say that line. Baby, baby. Möchtest du mein Schwanz blossen? That doesn't sound sexy at all. No, it doesn't sound sexy. <laughs> I'll be quiet now. But so you have to learn a German accent. Ger no, through an English, like a British accent. So, so wait, when, wait, wait. So you're speaking British, but like. It's British accent, like a German who what? learned English through a British accent. So let me hear something. No. <laughs> give me a, give me an idea. The German people always don't know where it is. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's great. Yeah. It was tough. But then if I was speaking to a German in the film, I had to speak German. So, so what only would you say? I, would, I don't remember the lines or anything. Du mein Schwanz blossen, <laughs> baby, <Yeah>. baby. <laughs> you yeah. do. Yeah, it was crazy. So, yeah, German, English, if I was speaking to the, uh, the Jewish people, and uh, if I'm speaking to German, it would have to be all in German. Have you seen the movie? Yeah. Do you like it? I did. It was a real passion project. And Ben Foster is... He's incredible. Incredible. Did you ever see Lone Survivor? Yeah. God, that movie's so good. Dude, Homeboy's so good. He is so good. He's so talented. That's great. Yeah. I'm excited for you. You got a lot of great stuff going on. And you, and you deserve it. You're a great guy. Thanks, and you're man. Super talented. And, Thanks, uh, dude. This is, uh, lastly... This is called Shit Talking with Billy Magnuson. Shit Talking? These are my patrons. If you want to join Patreon to give back to the podcast or give a little extra to the podcast, uh, I love my patrons. They support the podcast so much. But these are just kind of rapid fire. Oh, shit. Uh, by the way, Emily asks, the Game Night cast seems like a great group of people to hang out with. Who is the funniest to film with? The funniest to film? Ah, that's uh, Bateman. I can watch Bateman do anything. He could, he, the way he delivers a line, it's just so dry and so beautifully, like the cadence of it. He, right. he has, he has it down. He, he was just so funny to watch. To hang out with Lamorne Morris. Lamorne oh, Morris is, I love I that guy. Love and him. Sharon Horgan, d I would die for her. She's absolutely a treasure. By the way, how, beautiful as rachel mcadams she's gorgeous and she's so sweet i met her once at a party and she was so nice she's so nice man but how many guys just crush how many women men everyone just crush on rachel mcadams i mean right? she is she's a she is who she is and I, I great person her. i love her man. But um, sharon horgan fantastic human being really so funny i think i just saw an interview with two of you they paired you up yeah right we could not make she's it english. through the day yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah. she's irish 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 yeah, irish yeah. can you do an irish accent 
Uh, no, I'm not going to do it. No, fine, fine. <laughs> what if I get paid for it? Steph A, <laughs> Made for Love, quickly became a must-binge show. Are you excited about the second season? Do you have any idea on when it will come out? Yeah, we actually start shooting on Monday, uh, season two. So I'm really excited about that. And like, Jeez, where are they going to so take it? so much going on, dude. Not really. I feel like I have no... T- I'm like nothing to do well maybe you have time to read one of these books or you know work yeah, at the ronald donald house throw a throw a have you ever been to the magic castle i'm a member shut up yeah. do you do magic tricks I, I i don't do magic tricks but i like magic tricks i love magic i'm tricks. like a four-year-old watching magic i'm like oh my god <gasps> me too did you see that it's, i'm a how big dork the, I'm a... how did he put my name in an orange <laughs> he put my name in an orange <laughs> i'm gonna get this tattoo how did he do <laughs> it i flip the hell out same same um, Let's see. I want to go to the Magic Castle. If you want to hang out, take me to the Magic I'll Castle. I'll take you whenever you want. I'll, I'm ready. Just email me whenever you want to go. Let's go. Um, the Chief. If you had to live on a breakfast cereal the rest of your life, which one would it be? A Lucky Charms, I think. I was going to say Lucky Charms. I, 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 dude. I, or, or, or maybe some Fruit Loops. No, or it's weird. I would go Honey Nut Cheerios too. Mm, but, I like Honey Nut, but, yeah. but but Lucky Charms, all those. Lucky Charms, give it all day. Can you name all the charms in Lucky Charms? Rainbow, Heart, uh, Diamond. Diamond? There's a diamond. Is there a diamond? Uh, no. How does the song go? The, the, there's a song. After Heart, me, Lucky Charms. There's Hearts there's and me, Lucky Charms. Are, Hearts and Stars and Rainbows and the Red Balloon. It ends with and the Red Balloon, doesn't it? I, th- I, I think he got it. Think, My yeah. dude. There we go. Omar, loved your performance in The Oath. Oh, simultaneously hilarious and terrifying. How did you approach playing such a complicated character? Uh, had fun with Ike Barinholtz and was like, can I just, I, <laughs> all I could think of was like this guy that used to work with my dad growing up. And I was like, this is the guy, the most conservative, uh, like right wing person, the stash, all the haircut and everything. And it's the guy's dead serious. <laughs> like, I think that's where humor lies. It's being Dead, 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 pan, si- dead serious. Not deadpan, dead serious. Anything you're yeah. doing. Anything you're saying, commit to it. It's yeah. real. It's what your character believes. Yes, it's 100%. And right. do you know Ike? No. He's a wonderful man. Wonderful. Would he be a good guest? Yeah, Ike's great. He's he's funny. You know, I wish I had bits or like people that do bits. Like, I just don't. What Do you do impressions? No. Not one? No. Come on, you got to do one. Do one impression? I mean, everybody does walking. That's an easy one. Oh, yeah. Your son, <laughs> fuckhead that he is, <laughs> and that bitch or girlfriend, they took my narcotics. I always do that, but like, I, yeah. Did you see Seven Psychopaths? No. You haven't seen Second Seven Psychopaths? No. Fantastic film. Write McDonald. that down, Ryan. And I'm gonna. Oh my god! Yeah. All right, I'll watch it. Fantastic. I worked with Walken. I love. I loved it's watching Walken. It's uh, Rockwell. It's uh, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. It is fantastic. All right, I'm in. I'll yeah. watch that. I need something to watch. It's a whack ass, but it's McDonald. Uh, the guy did. Did you ever see In Bruges? It's yeah, the same, same guy did director. That yeah, he's a playwright as well. Would you ever do a horror movie? Um, here's my jam. I have done when I was like one of my first ones. It was called Blood Night: The Legend of Mary oh, Hatchet. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that one. <laughs> I remember. I remember that really? title. Yeah, I don't think I saw it, but I, I remember. Um, it. The only problem with doing horror films is you shoot at night, and I hate shooting at night where you have to shoot. You're like you're days terrible about it. Yeah, I like my morning. What is lastly? I know it's a stupid question. No. What's your best take usually? The best take, take one, take two. Or usually take three is when I fucking find no, it. Honestly, it's when I'm driving home being like, I should have fucking done this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, you That's know always the best thing. Why wasn't I thinking that? What the fuck? I, I misinterpreted the whole fucking taking thing. Taking a shower at home. You think it's three months later. God, why didn't I do that? Oh, my God. Yeah. Do you hold on to things? Do you let things go? I... <sighs> it's both like when someone breaks up with you i hold i'll hold i'll hold it's certain things it's certain things like i'll hold on to specific things that i where if i made the choice and i'm like oh man i need to work on that on myself if it's someone else's choice you can't really right do anything about it can you let things go are you someone that could just kind of let things go and let bygones be bygones Uh, my friend recently told me he's like Dude, sometimes you got to let things go. Like, I'll push on people, be like, well, what do you mean by that? Let's go. Let's go down this conversation. Let's go down. The, right. there. He's like, sometimes you just got to let it go, bro. And I, I got to work. You on hold it. on to things. Well, again, I think if be specific in life, be make a choice. Not making a choice drives me crazy. Like living in a state of limbo. You're like, what do, do you make a choice? Who cares? Right. Make a choice. There's no, there's no, there's no wrong answer. It's just a, 
Left to right. And left may fail. Yeah. So be it. Then go then go back right. I, yeah. Who gives a shit? Right. Just don't do nothing. Favorite role you've ever done that you go, fuck, I killed it. I loved it. I'm in. This this was my favorite role I've done so far. Wow. I uh, I loved Prince Anders from Aladdin. It was just I loved the character. But then there's like other experiences like I've had that were just man. I don't know, like with the career. I I doing a play doing tv film all these years after they, they they mean nothing to me now it's weird it's just it doesn't exist anymore right and so you know like the hunt we're always on the hunt for the next opportunity and like we fall in love with the the work of it so like the film coming out which i shot bond two years ago the the, the connection i have to it is different right you know because in the while doing it you're like oh what the fuck and then you slowly let it go, go yeah when and then the it's fuck gone already yeah. right it's weird. I love it. Love it. Well, thank you for allowing me to be inside of you. This thank has you. been. I love you. This has been a real treat. Really, really. Yeah. Did you have fun? Yeah, this is my first podcast ever. Like, how like easy was it? If you, it's never as good as this though. We'll never person, be as good as this do, again. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great, man. I appreciate. Yeah. I appreciate you, and uh, I'll take you to the Magic Castle. Oh, fuck yeah. We'll go. We have to dress up. You have to dress in a suit. I, I easily. I would love. And to. we'll laugh like kids, and we'll watch magic uh, tricks. <laughs> You want to go, Ryan? Yeah. How about the three of us go? Let's yeah. go. Just three solo guys. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for the wine. Looking I sharp. Thank it. you for the wine. You brought me uh, some uh, Chianti. Chianti. Can you do an impression of... Um... Chianti with fava beans. Yeah. That's what he says. Nice Chianti. Yeah, what does he say? He's like, what was that line? I ate his brain. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Chianti. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. I, I love that movie. God, he was great, wasn't he? Yeah. A sensor once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice candy. <laughs> <laughs> it was something like it was something like that. All right, dude, I'll let you go. Cheers, brother. Cheers. He's got a lot, a lot going on, man. Yeah, he's busy. He's busy. Do you want to be that busy? Do you like being this busy? No, I don't know. I, I don't. I think I lost my wanting to be busy i think when i was younger i just wanted to constantly be busy and now i like time to nap <laughs> i really he did a movie called no time to die i want plenty of time to nap plenty of time to nap that's the sequel <laughs> if i was in a bond movie plenty of time to nap would you see that one uh thank you guys all for supporting the podcast and listening uh, again go to patreon.com slash inside of you to support the podcast and other ways to get back uh thank you um cumulus for supporting the podcast. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jason, our editor. Wonderful job, Jason. Thank you, Bryce, for uh, producing. Uh, and thanks, Dylan, for helping me get some guests. And, uh, you know, right now, why don't we, uh, before I also, before also, mm. um, LA Comic Con, I'll be there December 4th and 5th, doing a small of the nights with Tom Welling. He'll be here. So make sure you get your tickets. And November 20th, my band Sunspin is playing virtually on stageit.com but you can get tickets on sunspin.com as well uh support the band come see the band uh you could also go to sunspin.com for awesome merch you see Stephen amell was wearing sunspin hats and tom welling wears sunspin shirts and like uh you know i appreciate the support it's really nice also if you want any inside of you merch go to the inside of you online store and there's some great stuff um lex luther stuff smallville stuff uh inside of you stuff mugs all that all that jazz that shit. Why don't we get into the top tier patrons? These are people who give back a little more, a lot more. Couldn't do the show without them. And here we go. Nancy D, Leah S, Trisha F, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Mama Lauren. Uh, G. Nico P, Jerry W, Robert B, Jason W, Kristen K, Amelia O, Allison L, Raj C, Joshua D, Emily S, CJP, Samantha M, Jennifer N, Stacy L. Correct. Jen S, Jamal F, Janelle B, Kimberly E, Mike E, Eldon Supremo, 99 More, Amira, Santiago M, Sarah F, Chad W, Liam P, Janine R, Maya P, Maddie S, Belinda N, Chris H. I just got into a little Jack Nicholson there. Dave H, Spider-Man Chase, Sheila G, not to be confused with Sheila E. e. Brad D, Ray H, Tabitha T, Michelle K, Michael S, Talia M, Betsy D, Claire Baby. Laura L, Chad L, Rochelle, Nathan E, Marion, Meg K, Janelle P, Trav L, Dan N, Lorraine G, Big Stevie W, Kendall T, Angel M, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Super Sam, 
Coleman G, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Liz L, Liz I, Jeremy C, Andy T, Cody R, Sebastian K, Gavinator, Ann H, David C, John B, Brandy D, Yavor, Camille S, Bano, Bono, Bono, The Chief, The Chief. Joey M, Willie F, Christina E, Adelaide N, Jeffrey M, Omar L. It's it's an I, right? I, well, go back to Stacy L. What does it say next to Stacy L? Is that an L? Yeah, it's Omar I because he's not go. doing the L. Yeah. Omar I. Hi, Omar I. Omar I. Omari. Omari. <laughs> Lena N, Design, OTG, Eugene R, Chris P, Nikki G, Corey, and KTB. Thank you, podcasters. Thank you, patrons. Thank you, uh, anybody who listens to the podcast. Uh, I really appreciate you. It means a ton to me. I hope you continue to listen. We'll try to give you good interviews, and and hopefully we'll all learn something, how to be a better human being. Thanks for taking the time while you're driving to work or you're doing whatever with your time. You're spending time with us. I'm Michael Rosenbaum. I'm Ryan Taylor. From the Hollywood Hills. Hollywood Hills, California. Ryan, big wave. Is this what the kids are doing? Uh, thank know. you guys for listening. Thank you allowing me for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you. I had a blast. I hope you did too. And um, take care.